Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom. For this question, we want to work out how to answer question three, as displayed on the screen, which reads, a game of poker uses a deck of 52 cards with four suits, hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs. Each suit has 13 cards, consisting of an ace, cards numbered from two to 10, a jack, queen, and king. If a person is dealt five cards, find the probability of getting four aces. So this is one of those classic probability questions where you're given the facts of a game of chance, in this case poker. Um, other common ones might be rolling dice or flipping coins, but poker is another common one. I, I found that came up a lot during my high school math, was even at university doing actuarial studies, we'd get a lot of questions like this. And um, whilst you can work out how to answer these from first principles, I also find playing the game um, helps you develop instincts with how everything works. So I was lucky enough that when I was growing up with my family, we'd often play poker together, maybe on the weekend. Um, just with funny money or, you know, five cent, ten cent, twenty cent coins, nothing serious, but just the act of playing the game meant that when I'd come up against questions like this, I almost had a little bit of a head start because I had a very um, intuitive sense for how everything worked in the game of poker. So, um, not necessarily advocating uh, for you know children to be learning how to gamble, but uh, poker is one of those games that uh, if you take away the greed and the money and the gambling, the actual game itself is almost second to none in developing probabilistic thinking, which which I personally think is one of the most um, underdeveloped skills in in people and, and how they think. Um, thinking probabilistically is actually very important in a lot of uh, endeavors. Um, and so these kind of questions are great to, to be able to work through and get your head around. Now, to tackle the question, I'll first show you how you can uh, build out the answer from first principles, so working it through the long way. And then I'll show you another way to think about it that lets you get to the same answer much more quickly. Um, but what I'll emphasize at first is, even if when I do get to that quick approach, it doesn't instinctively make sense, it's not something you would have necessarily thought of yourself, you don't need to worry too much because you've always got the longhand form to fall back on. And so that's what I'll start with showing because that's kind of the main way to really understand what's happening. So in terms of what we're dealing with here, we're dealing with 52 cards in our deck, and of those 52, we know we've got four aces, which I'll represent with an A, and then we've got 48 other types of cards, whatever they are, which I'll represent with an X. And we've been asked to draw out five cards, one, two, three, four, five, and we want to know how can we draw out five cards so that we've got four aces in any of the five. So what is the probability that we draw out four aces? So really what that means, if we're drawing out five cards, four of them will be aces and only one of them will be something else. So step one is to think about what are all the possible ways that could happen. So I could draw out an ace on the first card and then an ace on the second and on the third and on the fourth, and then finally for the last card, draw out something else. Or I could get three aces and then draw out something else and then get my fourth ace. Or I could get two aces, draw out something else and then get the other two aces, and hopefully you see the pattern. I could get one ace, draw out something else, and then three aces. Or I could draw out something else and then get four aces. All of those outcomes meet the criteria of four aces. So to answer this question, we just need to work out the probability of each of these outcomes and then add them up. So to work out the, these probabilities, we can again go from first principles and ask, well, what's happening when I draw out the first ace? Well, I've got four aces 
that could meet that criteria. And I'm drawing them out of 52 cards. So the probability that my first card is an ace is 4 on 52. Now, once that's happened, if I need to get a, another ace on the second card, well, there's only three left because I've already drawn out one. And there's only 51 cards left in the deck, again, because I've already drawn out one. Now, similarly, when I want to get my next ace, there's only two aces left to choose from out of 50 cards left. And then for the last ace, there's only one left of the aces out of 49. And then once I've got my four aces, there's 48 cards left to choose from because I've already drawn out four. And there's 48 of the other type. So that actually is just 48 on 48. And really what's that, what that's saying is once I've got my four aces, I will definitely be drawing out another card because that's all that's left. So that's the first way. Well, that, that is the way to get the probability for the first outcome. Now let's repeat it for the second outcome. So again, it'll be 4 on 52 times 3 on 51 times 2 on 50. That's how we get our first three aces, just the same as before. But now we're thinking about getting one of the other cards, of which there's 48, out of the remaining 49 cards left. And then for my final ace, there's only one ace left, and there's 48 cards to choose from. Now if we go for this third possibility, 4 on 52 for the first ace, times 3 on 51 for the second ace. Now we're going for our other cards, so there's 48 of those out of 50 cards to choose from. And then back to the aces, so 2 out of 49 left, and then 1 out of 48. Hopefully you're seeing a pattern here. Again, 4 on 52 times for the other card, 48 on 51 times, and now back to our aces, so we'll get 3 on 50 times 2 on 49 times 1 ace left out of 48. And then finally, if we start with our other, there's 48 on 52 cards, and then for our aces there'll be 4 on 51 times 3 on 50 times 2 on 49 times 1 on 48. Now I've drawn that all out long form, but um, chances are as you start to see the pattern, you'll work out what's going on and you don't need to spend all the time drawing it out. But just to help explain, I've from first principles drawn out the probabilities. Notice that for all of the five cases, the denominator is the same. It always goes 52, 51, 50, 49, 48 every time. And for the numerators, we started with 4, 3, 2, 1, and then 48. Then we had 4, 3, 2, 48, 1. So the actual same numbers, just a slightly different order. 4, 3, 48, 2, 1, and so on. The numerators were also all the same numbers, albeit just in a different order. But notice that when multiplying, and with multiplication, order doesn't matter. Um, 3 times 2 is the same as 2 times 3, you get the same outcome. So actually these five sets of probabilities we can calculate, I'll represent that as the probability of four aces, rather than keying all of these into my calculator and um, adding them up, I can actually know it's going to be five times any one of these, and I'll just stick with the first one. So it's really 5 times bracket 4 on 52 times 3 on 51 times 2 on 50 times 1 on 49 times 48 on 48. And there's a few ways we can write this out. I'll keep, I'll, I'll stick with the um, fractional format for now. So that's equal to 5 times, and let's just get our calculator out and work out what the numerator will be. So that's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 48. That's 1152. And the denominator will be 
52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48 it's divided by 311,875,200. And that will be equal to, let's um, do the 5 times 1152. That's 5,760 on the 311,875,200. And that is one way you could write this answer. Um, I'll just key it into the calculator to get it into decimal form. So 5760 divided by 3118752200. And that gives us 0 0.1234, 1469. You could write that as your answer, or you could multiply by 100 if you want to write it as a percentage. And that gives us 0.001846.9%. And either of these three formats would get you the marks for this question. That, that's basically, they're all, there's three ways of writing the same thing. So the key to this question is, working out all the different ways and noticing they're the same so that you can multiply by five and you get to the right answer. Now that's what I call the long form way of um, tackling this question. Now there is a much faster short form way and as I mentioned before don't worry if this is um, maybe goes over your head or doesn't make sense to you instinctively. Um, it's just an alternative that perhaps after enough practice with these kind of questions um, it would jump out at you. So um, what I'll do is over to the side, let's think about, um, first of all, the number of ways that we can draw out our five cards from 52. In theory, that's um, kind of the denominator. So we could say that the probability of four aces is going to equal something divided by something else where we'll start with the denominator, which is the number of ways to get five out of 52. How do we get any five cards out of 52? Doesn't matter about the order, um, doesn't matter what cards they are, that is the total um, kind of uh, population set that we're dealing with. But what we care about is getting four aces and any other card. So if we can quickly think about the number of the, what the numerator would be in the denominator, we can get to the same answer without having to draw everything out longhand. Now, with the numerator is actually quite simple because there are only four aces. So if we're getting all four aces, regardless of the order, who cares which, um, which way, whether it's the ace first or the aces last. Ignoring that for now, fundamentally, if we've got four aces, then there's only one of these boxes that's left for us to fill with one of the other cards. And we've got 48 of those to choose from. So actually, the number of ways you can get four aces and something else is simply 48 because you're gonna get your four aces however you get them, and there's only 48 ways to get something else. And then for the numerator, we, we want to pick five things out of 52 and we don't care about the order. And if you're familiar with your combinatorial mathematics, that's 52C5. And that, that's gonna get us the right answer, so if I, put that in, that, that'll be 48 divided by, and let's put 52C5 into our calculator, 52C5 is 2,598,960, and what does that give us? So let's go 48 divided by 2,598,960, times 100 
0.001849%. Perfect. So either way gets us the answer. One way is clearly much longer than the other, but I would say if in doubt, go from first principles and chances are you, you won't make any mistakes. Um, these kind of faster approaches, um, there's a lot more room for error. You know, you might do a 52P5 instead of C5 because you might get confused about whether order is important. You might put a factorial somewhere that it doesn't need to be. There's a lot more room for confusion when you're trying to get the shorthand ways to do these questions. So I often think about these as going, well, let's start from first principles. Um, hopefully time allows uh, on the exam. Um, it's not possible to go from first principles on all questions. Sometimes the nature of the numbers that you're dealing with means you, you simply couldn't list out every possible way. It would just take too long. And that's when you'll be forced into these other approaches. But where it is feasible to do so, I would always say the longhand approach is going to be less error prone and you have a better chance of not making a mistake. So uh, that, that's all I've got to say on this one. Hopefully uh, that was helpful for you. And uh, tick boom.